So how comes that some companies go from being an unknown company and someone who makes just entry level stuff to actually being reputable and actually being desirable for those who already have some audio experience? Today we are going to talk about the SMSL DO300. This is the latest DAC from SMSL and how SMSL went from being an unknown entry level company to a company that produces actually desirable products. Today's DAC is the same shape and size as any other SMSL. So let's see what it does differently this time around. You are most likely acquainted with this shape. Like this is the shape and design of every single SMSL duct. Every single one of their ducts has this design. Even the amplifier, the AO200 has the same size, the same shape, the same everything, black color. So this one is the DO300. It has a good selection of inputs and a good selection of outputs. It has optical USB and coaxial inputs. It has an I2S input and a Bluetooth antenna. It also has an AS slash IBU input, which I never used to be honest. And it has two outputs, one in the XLR format and one in the RCA format. We have a kettle power plug, which is very common. So you'll be able to use any other cable than rather than the one that comes in the package if you didn't get the correct one for your country. And we have this one wheel at the front. It comes with a fully functional remote, which is very important for its usage. It has a little display here and everything else just looks <laughs> the same as with every other SMSL. So I did review the DO200 and the DO200 Mark II. Both of them were fairly popular. The DO300 is even better actually. And most of the changes are actually in the Sonic because they used a different DAC chip. They used a new ASS chip produced in America or the United States. This new DAC chip changed the sound a lot. and of course, they probably have other internal changes, but I did not disassemble it to tell for sure. With that being said, even a fine retuning would have been enough, but they actually made it more resolute, higher in detail, and it generally performs better than the older SMSL DO200 series. So a DO300 wasn't expected. At least in my book, the DO200 did something, it did it really well, and that was about it for the DO200. It was like a mid-centric, sweet-sounding duck that is smooth and relaxed and didn't have a tone of impact and dynamics. And I mentioned that a lot in my review because I want you to know how stuff sounds so that you can purchase something that you will like and enjoy. The DO300, this one, has much better dynamics, much better impact, and much better resolution than the original DO200. It now has a better extension in the treble and a better extension in the bass. Both of them have much better impact and much better presence than the DO200. The DO200 has some roll off. So both the sub bass tends to roll off a bit, the impact becomes much softer and the treble also rolls off a bit and the impact is much softer than the impact in the mid range. With DO300, the impact still gets a bit softer, but it is not that much softer. It's, it's much more natural and much more linear overall. The presentation is much more even and much better rounded. DO300 also has a better sound stage. It becomes more holographic. Instruments have better separation between them. They are better layered and everything just sounds a bit better. Everything is a bit better defined and a bit better outlined with the DO300. The button on the front can be used to access all of its options, although there isn't much to access. Besides the volume, you can switch between the inputs and that is pretty much it when it comes to stuff that would actually change the sonic signature. The O300 has a few sonic modes or filters. So it has both the DAC filters, which are the usual, which change the input's response, which have some slight changes in sound, but may not be so noticeable to you. And it also has a few sound coloration modes, which in my personal experience do absolutely nothing. I couldn't tell apart the warm sound from the tubey sound, from the standard sound, from the crystal clear sound. It has those options, but to me at least, they were absolutely useless. They didn't do absolutely anything to the sound. I don't think I have special ears and I tend to mention this a lot in my reviews. I think that as a reviewer I should have very average ears. I shouldn't be special, I shouldn't have a special hearing because if I had a special hearing then some of the changes that I noticed wouldn't be noticeable to you. You should really look forward to a reviewer that is as average as possible because then you are very likely to hear the same things. And I think that I have very average hearing. I don't think that I have a special hearing or that I am special in any way. I think that I hear extremely normal. And that is the thing. With a normal hearing, those changes were absolutely unnoticeable. I tested the SMSL DO300 with multiple setups, including the KLH Model 5 I have in the back, the NHTC3 and the Buchardes 400. With all of them, 
it has better resolution than the DO200. It also has a slightly better sound than the Ever Solo DAC Z6. In some ways, the mid range is more musical and more fluid on the DO300, but this one doesn't have any visualization effect, which I noted that I enjoy a lot on the DAC Z6 from Ever Solo. That is something that only Ever Solo does. At least at this moment, I don't have any other deck that has fancy visualizations. But with a tiny display here, I think that SMSR could implement that. I, I really like having a visualization. DAX Z6 has those view meters, which are just enjoyable to see. And I would like to see that. The display of the DO300 can be set to turn off or to stay on. It has multiple brightness levels and in general, it is configurable. You could configure it to do anything you desire. For the amplifiers, I have used both SMSR EO200, Cyrus One Kest and Roxanne Caspian. All of them combined well with the DO300 and I haven't noticed any kinds of sound or any kinds of noise in the background or of hissing. That was a problem with DAX like Hyphiman EF400 which although is a superb DAX slash headphone amplifier has some noise when you use it as a standalone DAX. With DO300 I did not notice any issue at all. It is super clean, super silent, super good. The surface is very resistant to scratches. You probably have noticed that I've taken it outdoors and I've placed it on a few surfaces. No scratch on the DO300, but it is slightly smudge prone. And I've seen some of your comments about me leaving smudges on the products and why. Well, I don't really have dirty hands. I usually clean my hands before taking a video and before taking B-rolls so that I am relatively clean, you know, just the usual sweat and stuff and well if I leave smudges on those trust me you will leave smudges on those and that is something you may want to know about reviewing is all about describing the user experience which I want to do for you I want to let you know how it will feel and this one has some smudges if you can see it it has some right now which means that when you use it if you don't clean it with a wet napkin or such you will leave some smudges on it as well which is something you should know about once again I want you to go knowing what you'll get from it. And the sound you'll get from it is actually worth it. I think that it is worth the struggle of purchasing the DO300. It has such a better sound than the DO200 that I can't really bring myself to recommend the DO200 above it, especially given the price difference. This one is priced at 549 US dollars, which is just about 100 US dollars more than the DO200 and the DO200 Mark II. And for this increase in money, you actually get a pretty significant increase in resolution, clarity, and detail. Both of them can decode MQA. This one can also receive LDAC Bluetooth, and it is a very capable DAC. It, it can decode high resolution files, DSD files, you know, all of that stuff. Most of my music is still in Redbook Flux it is and I, I honestly wanted to adopt MQA but honestly almost none of my favorite tracks is available in MQA so what am I going to do change my music listening preferences well of course not I don't care about MQA if my bands won't release their CDs in MQA and such because What's the purpose? I don't want to listen to new music that is available in MQA. That's like gatekeeping. And I don't want to do any gatekeeping. I want you to enjoy the music that you enjoy. You have the option of using MQA if your favorite albums are available in MQA. And if they are not available in MQA, then you are capable of enjoying your classical Redbook FLAC files, as I do with the DO300, because most of my listening is in Redbook FLAC. Even YouTube sometimes, I'll be honest with you. I enjoy watching music videos. And YouTube has one of the worst qualities from the streaming services, at least. Tidal has better quality, Spotify has better quality, and all of these streaming services tend to have better quality than YouTube, at least for audio. But, you know, YouTube is really enjoyable having the music video playing too, so I wouldn't disregard it. This brought me to also test the delay on the Duo 300. There is no delay, so when you play a song, there is no delay between the video and the song. I tested this to zero milliseconds, which means that you can play competitive first-person shooter games and game in general with it. You will not notice any kind of delay. All in all, the DO300 is a pleasing duck to use. It is a pretty perfect duck at this point. The only things that are really missing from it is a headphone output. If you wanted to have a dax headphone amplifier, it doesn't have a headphone output and it doesn't have any kind of visualization, which is also kind of a minus for me because I wanted to have some kind of visualization going on while it is playing. This is why I usually keep the Ever Solo DAX Z6 on my desk and this one wouldn't sit on my desk. This one could sit above the amplifier if you want to make a setup, but it is not necessary to keep it on your desk. The display doesn't really do anything. 
With LDAC, if you place it right above your router, you are going to get some network congestion. So I would suggest placing it at least a few feet away from the router or a few meters away. I don't know what a feet really is. I think that meters is a better word. So at least three meters away from the router is going to give you better results than if it is placed right next to a Wi-Fi router. Because Bluetooth networks are quite complex and I will actually make a full written review on Bluetooth protocols where I'll explain why you want to do those things and how to get the best quality in Bluetooth. It is quite probable that that article will be already published when I publish the review on the SMSL DO300 or at least the video. Don't forget this one was provided by the mega store Aoshida store as they are named. Aoshida is the main dealer of SMSL products. It is also available from Linsoul and other stores but I do recommend purchasing from Aoshida. They are excellent with the warranty. Some say that they are better than Linsoul but I personally had had excellent experience with both, but Aoshida is going to provide you with a wider selection of DAX and generally more solid products. For example, desktop products, while Linsoul is better for EMs, for portables and for entry-level products. I see a lot of people purchasing a ton of entry-level stuff from Linsoul, while from Aoshida store they usually purchase DAX, AMPs and stuff like SMSL, uh, topping and other such products. I thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, purchase it if it sounds like it would be a lot of fun. Don't forget, you can read the full written review if you want a more detailed impression and more info about the sound, more comparisons, because there I go more in depth with the comparisons. I thank you so much for watching and I hope we'll see each other really soon. Bye bye.